Hello everyone, this is Church on the Rise, Church Online, and it's a special day for us as a church and churches all over the world, because this is Pentecost Sunday, and it's uh, the birth of the church that we celebrate, uh, when the first believers, after the resurrection of Jesus, they were filled with God's Holy Spirit, 50 days after that occasion and uh, thousands were brought into the church which is great news and i'm sure that is continuing right throughout this world as we reach out to god in whatever we need uh, our needs are so thank you for joining us this evening and we pray that we'll have a great time we're going to start our worship by singing one of our songs together at home, uh, longing for the time when we can be together and obviously uh, sharing in our worship. So here we go. This is it. It's called Living Hope. Let's join together. Between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness saw through. The shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine So great a mercy What heart could
Well, he is our living hope, isn't he? Jesus, the one who gives real hope to people. If you ain't got hope tonight, then Jesus is the answer. Praise his name. Now I'm going to ask Hazel if she'll uh, read uh, from God's word. Uh, over to you, Hazel. I'm reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from the heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Thank you so much, Hazel. What a wonderful account of the day of Pentecost. It's always good to read that account. And uh, that day when God filled his disciples and many around, filled them with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now I've asked Derek if he'll just lead us in prayer this evening. So over to you, Derek. Heavenly Father, on this day we say happy birthday to the church, a church that you created 2,000 years ago on that day of Pentecost. We give thanks, Lord, that you, when you left uh, and to be with your Father, that you left us the Holy Spirit, a spirit that has filled many churches from that day, has filled many of people from that day. And we do pray now, Lord, we really do pray that your Holy Spirit will fill all the churches in and around the world, but especially at this time, Church on the Rise, as it aims to reopen shortly. We just pray that your spirit will be in that church. And as everybody walks, people walk in, they will feel what it is like to feel that spirit in them. And we give thanks. We also give thanks to you, Lord, for the safety of people who have traveled this last couple of days to see family and friends, to go on holiday and have arrived back safely. We give thanks, Lord, for all the people in our church. We pray healing on everyone in the church and outside and everyone who is listening to this broadcast who needs healing. We pray that through your Holy Spirit, they will feel your presence and whatever is wrong with them will be healed by you. We give thanks, Lord, for all that you do in our lives. We just are amazed of just how much you influence us all in what we do in our daily lives. We give thanks, Lord, for you being our God. You are the only God, and you are the God who wants us all saved. And so we pray that people will know your son, and then through your son will know you. So we just pray a blessing on everyone who listens to this prayer today 
and in the weeks to come. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Derek. It's always good to pray, isn't it? Now we're going to ask uh, Paul if he'll share the word with us this evening. So let's listen intently to what he has to share. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Wayne. Well, I'm going to begin with an unusual question uh, this evening. Uh, have you been uh, ever told to wait for something, but you have no idea what you're waiting for or when it will happen? Because that's what it was like for the followers of Jesus in our story. They didn't understand what was going on. After Jesus rose from the dead, he promised his followers that they would receive power. In the uh, end of Luke's gospel, Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem until you have been clothed with power from on high. And in Acts, Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So they knew that they were going to receive power, that the Holy Spirit was going to come upon them, and that they would have to wait. But he also told them that this waiting would bring that power. They had no idea, they didn't understand exactly what he meant. And they had no idea what to expect. Now imagine being there at that time. They'd already been through the uh, pain of seeing their Lord suffer, be rejected, be beaten, and be crucified and buried. And then he had come back from the dead and they didn't really understand and they didn't understand when he had promised when he was alive that he would come back from the dead after being put to death and now they were being told other things that they didn't really understand so imagine being there having this promise but having little idea what was going to happen and then the day of pentecost came now, Pentecost was a celebration of harvest, and it was a, an ancient uh, celebration, an annual celebration, one of the several feasts of the Jews. And people would come from all the nations around, Jewish people. It was 50 days after Passover. Now, Passover was the time when Jesus died. So if uh, Pentecost was 50 days after Passover. In effect, these people were actually waiting seven weeks plus a day for something that they didn't understand and they didn't know when it was going to happen. Well, hear this. After weeks of waiting for what nobody knew anything about, suddenly, there came from heaven the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And this wind came and uh, they saw tongues of fire separating and coming to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The power had come after all that time waiting. Now imagine being there. Suddenly it had happened. A crowd gathered because these people were speaking in other languages, telling of the wonderful works of God. But they were speaking in the languages of all the people from the other nations. And all the people from the other nations were amazed. They were perplexed. And they said, listen to this, what's going on? They are telling of the amazing works of God in our languages. And some people made fun of them and said, oh, they've been drinking. The Holy Spirit had come. The power had arrived. And immediately, 
Peter was on his feet preaching to the crowds who had gathered. And through that message, as Wayne has said, 3,000 souls were added to the church. These were the first Christian converts, people from every known nation at the time. I looked at a map of the uh, whole area uh, in my study Bible before I came to speak tonight. And you're looking at an area that covers thousands of miles. It talks about the Medes and the Elamites. They came from 800 miles east of Jerusalem. You're talking about people from Cyrene who came just over 800 miles from the west of Jerusalem across North Africa. And you're talking about people who came from Asia and Pontus and Cappadocia, which again were hundreds of miles away, but not quite as far. And I couldn't believe when I saw that Rome was over a thousand miles away. And these people had come from all those places for this celebration of the harvest of first fruits. And they were, had to go home after this, converted to Christianity. They went home bearing the message of the gospel. So hallelujah, the gospel would have spread thousands of miles with these new converts. God was fulfilling his promise that there would be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. What a miracle took place on the day of Pentecost and afterwards. This is incredible. We should be sh jumping and shouting for joy as we read this story. Peter was the one who preached this gospel, this message. Peter would let Jesus down so badly when Jesus needed him the most. Peter still feeling the full guilt of having denied his Lord. Peter could never have made this happen on his own. 3,000 people being converted. It's incredible. What a, what a thing to happen in your first sermon, eh? 3,000 souls being saved. Not only that, but not long after this, Peter preached to another large crowd and 2,000 more people were saved and added to the church. And they would have taken the gospel back. And it's incredible to see what was happening at this time. But what power made this happen? This could only happen not through any power of Peter, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, who makes us weak Christians strong in his strength. He makes us strong to do the things that he has called us to do and to make what we do in his name effective. He makes it work. And all this is possible because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. What happened here was in fulfillment of an ancient promise. It was given about, let's say, somewhere around 800 years beforehand. Joel chapter two, I will pour out my spirit on all people and so on. And it's this that Peter quotes in his sermon to the crowd. God knew eight centuries beforehand that he was going to do this. He was going to pour out his Holy Spirit and there would be miracles. There would be signs and wonders even in the heavens. There would be blood and fire and billows of smoke, the sun would be turned to darkness, the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, 5,000 people got saved 
as a result then of the outpouring of the Spirit and Peter preaching his first two sermons. Not bad. All of it was prophesied 800 years roughly before it happened. And so it came to pass. What Jesus told his followers to wait for came about the outpouring of the great Holy Spirit. And from then on, the church grew daily. If you read the end of chapter two of the book of Acts, you'll see there that the church met every day and they met in the temple courts. They broke bread, that is, they had communion in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They praised God and they enjoyed the favor of all the people. And it said, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And if you read through chapter three and four, you'll see more of it there, including the second sermon of Peter, where 2,000 souls were saved. The power of the Holy Spirit is supernatural. You can't, you can't explain it in human terms. It's nothing to do with us. It's God, uh, God at work, God at work. It's power from on high. And as I say, it makes us weak Christians strong in the Lord so that we can do the things the Lord has called us to do, intended us to do. What things? Well, preach, preach in his name, the good news of his coming, of his death, his resurrection, that he gives eternal life to all who will believe in him. As it says at the end of, uh, Chapter two there, the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Uh, miracles of healing and so on. Incredible things happen when we move in the power of the Holy Spirit. And those first Christians went on to do great things in the power of the Holy Spirit. Read through the book of Acts. If ever I need encouragement, I read through the book of Acts to remind myself of what happened when the Spirit was poured out and to remind myself of what God does and what God can do and will do if we seek him to fill us with the Spirit. And you know, friends, great things have happened since then as a result of the power of the Holy Spirit. If you look at the history of revivals, you'll see great things that have happened. You'll see there hundreds, thousands of souls being swept into the kingdom of God, being saved in the power of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes without any sermon being preached, people falling on their knees in the streets, crying out to God for mercy. The, the pubs being closed because people didn't want to go and drink and get drunk. The uh, landladies on the doors of the pubs with glasses of beer asking the men as they went past, come and have a pint of beer with us. And they would say, no, no, that doesn't give you the life that I've got now. I've got new life in Jesus. The courts were closed because there were no cases to try. All sorts of wonderful things have, ha have happened because God moved in the power of his Holy Spirit in revival. Hallelujah. This can happen today. If we pray, people have been praying for years. I've been a Christian 49 years and I've prayed all that time for revival. There are people are all around the world praying for revival. And you know there are people in other parts of the world who are praying for revival in Wales and they don't even know where Wales is. But God has told them, pray for revival in Wales. And that's what they're doing. And a friend of mine some years ago met a group of people. They came up to him and they were in Cardiff. They were outside Cardiff Castle and they said, 
uh, where's the revival? And he said, what, what revival? And they said, well, God has told us to pray for revival in Wales, and we've come over to see it. That's how much uh, is happening in the world. People are praying for revival. Ask God to move in revival in the power of his spirit. Are you filled with the spirit? We all need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're not, ask him. All of us who are Christians need this power. And if you are a Christian, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit now. Ask God for that power to flow into you and through you. And he will use you in ways that you would never have believed possible. You can pray and your prayers will be answered. You will pray for miracles and God will perform them. You will pray for the sick to be healed and they will be healed. So many things will happen where people are filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're not filled, then ask him today. I'd just like to ask people who are listening, if you don't believe in Jesus today, will you come and believe in him? I just want to tell you that God loves you so much. And I just want to tell you that Jesus died for you so that you might know him and receive eternal life so that you might go to heaven and be with Jesus for eternity. God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son, that if you will believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. And I give you that invitation to believe in him today. I just want to share a word of knowledge that the Lord gave me this afternoon when I was praying for this service this evening. The Lord told me that someone would be listening who has a lump or maybe one or more lumps in their body and they've been aware of them but too worried to go to the doctor. I had a picture of Jesus coming and laying his hands on you. He wants to reassure you that he loves you very much. And whatever that lump is about, he lays his hands on you and you are healed in his name. I just want to say, to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you so much, Paul. What an encouraging word, especially on this day as we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit 2,000 years ago. And uh, the encouragement also that we might receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, it was interesting to hear from Paul there. He was talking about 49 years ago. That's when I got filled with God's Holy Spirit in 1972. And uh, the word of God is very clear that we need to be filled with God's Holy Spirit daily. Someone has said we need it daily because we leak. We need, uh, we're like a, a hole in a bucket, you know. But God's Holy Spirit is so powerful and can work so many great things through each one of us. Do respond this evening, whether it's to be filled with God's Holy Spirit or whether it's to know Jesus for the first time. I'd love to hear from you. Perhaps there's someone who can respond to that word of knowledge that Paul has shared. Why don't you respond? Why don't you get in touch with us? Contact details are at the end of this video, but also we have links on our Facebook page and our YouTube platform. Jesus wants so much for each one of us. He wants to pour his blessing upon each one of us. So do respond. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to pray with you. And we'd love to send you a little booklet if you're doing that for the very first time. 
this little booklet. And you can't see it, but it's a red background. But it says, this is for you. So do that. And we'd love to send it out to you. So as we come to the end of our service, we're going to sing another song. Uh, and uh, let's worship together as we sing King of Kings. Let's praise him. We're just going to close in prayer. And I wonder if, Steve, would you close it in prayer for us, if you unmute yourself? Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you tonight for the wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit. What a difference it makes in this world today. Such a powerful thing. I pray, Lord, that you will open our hearts and open our minds to receive from you that that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you will bless every person that is here at this service tonight, whether you're in person or you're the recorder. I pray, Lord, that you will open their hearts and open their minds to what you have achieved. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, folks, for joining us this evening. Uh, we do pray that God will richly bless you and your family. And as we've said, uh, if we can be of any help, then please get in contact with us. We'd love to pray with you. So every blessing, I'm just going to ask everyone to unmute so they can say their farewells. Okay, folks, thank you. All the best. Bye. 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 Bye.